and we are back with our Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. Severe weather risks shifting into Ohio this afternoon. Some reports of wind and hail flowing out of the Fort Wayne, Detroit, and Toledo area earlier today. And as you can see, the Storm Prediction Center going for a slight risk in Ohio and Michigan and breaking out another slight risk in the Kansas City and Topeka area for this afternoon. And the surface chart this afternoon does show a couple frontal boundaries. Cold front moving through Detroit, Finley, and Cincinnati this evening, and a warm front moving north through Wichita and Springfield with a strong blast of cold air coming out of the Dakotas and Wyoming. This time of year, we take a lot of interest what goes on on the Great Plains. We are getting into storm season. This is when we see large tornadoes and supercells in the central U.S. So let's work our way from south to north from the moisture source up to the strong upper level dynamics. We see 90 degree temperatures emerging at San Angelo with mid 80s in the panhandles almost 90 degrees at Lubbock, but this is air behind the dry line. Dew points in that area in the 20s. The dry line located from about El Reno down to about Vernon and just west of Abilene down towards Bakersfield. So right in that area right there, dividing this rich upper 60s dew points air near 70, even 72 at Waco from the drier 20s and 30s out to the west. As we go north, we get into that air along the warm front. We're seeing a little bit of convergence in the wind flow right there. South flow in Oklahoma, the Ozarks, and north flow along the Interstate 70 corridor. The Storm Prediction Center does have some useful tools up here at the top. Under Forecast Tools, you go to Mesoanalysis, and you click on your area of interest. Now, one tool that I find useful is this velocity tensor magnitude. And I can use that to find areas where there's deformation due to the presence of a front. So I can use that to kind of like figure out maybe where a front might be lurking. Like right in here, that's probably not a front. That's probably the dry line. But still, it is a boundary. And, you know, I can look at the patterns here and find areas I need to focus on. Another useful product is divergence and vorticity. And you get both shading and isopleths. The shading corresponds to your vorticity. It's a measure of the spin in the air. That's a little more useful for finding mesolows. So I might be looking for mesolow development right there around, I guess it would be around uh, Elkhart liberal somewhere in that area and the red and black lines those are going to be areas of convergence actually the the red is your convergent areas you can see that wind flowing together right there and if you have any doubts about what you're seeing you just look at the bottom here your fill colors are vorticity and the isopleths are divergence so the convergence is going to be red so those are also tools you can use to find important weather processes taking place. So here, a mixture of both vorticity and convergence. Another possible mesolow around Burlington and Goodland. And another low up there in the Nebraska Panhandle. And this also reinforces the possibility of a front somewhere in this area can't really pin it down with this data very well, but that's what your surface chart is for. And you have to kind of zoom in to really see all of the available data. So we can see in this part of Kansas, mid 80s, up to the north, mid to low 70s. So that supports a boundary maybe somewhere in here, all the way over towards Chanute, and let's see, where does that go up north? Yeah, I'm going to put that boundary right in here. So that's our rough location for that front. And as we move to the east and check out the weather in Ohio, we see that other cold front 
sweeping into the western part of Ohio. West winds gusting to 37 knots there at Fort Wayne, contrasting with southerly flow in Ohio itself and dew points up near 60 degrees at Dayton and Cincinnati. And you can see we've got a tornado warning out. MCS stretching from just east of Toledo to Dayton. And one of those cells there appears to be supercellular. You can see a gust there to 55 knots. And checking out our details, lots of severe warnings all up and down that line. And the purple, that's going to correspond to the tornado warning right there. Now, this cell, unfortunately, is equidistant from the Cleveland and Wilmington radar. So it is a little bit challenging to interpret. But there it is. It does have a supercellular structure. And if we go up to higher tilts, a little bit of an indication of a weak echo region right there. It's going to be pretty difficult to actually find a bounded weak echo region at this range. The base velocity shows a lot of outbound, which is pretty common since we're pretty high up in the storm. So we have to subtract out that motion. I'm going to set a vector of 230 at 40. I always like doing these manually kind of keeps me in touch with that data. And we basically subtract out that motion. And here we can see that there's rotation up in the upper parts of the storm. This is going to be up at, uh, let's see here, about 9,000 feet. And that has a diameter, that rotation, that's got about, uh, let's see, about four or five miles. So that's a pretty broad meso. In fact, I'm not really 100% sure that these are correlated. But we take a look at some of the other tilts and we look for consistency over time. Yeah, this might be a little bit better correlated right there. And we're going up to higher tilts and this gets more into storm top divergence. So not much to see there. So you're certainly dependent on spotter data, law enforcement reports, that kind of thing. So just going basically off of the structure of the storm, that's the area I would be concerned about. And this other cell, it is isolated. These are discrete cells. So this definitely has potential. And the other cells down the line, yeah, this one has a tornado warning as well. Little embedded supercell right there. Looks like another supercell there, another one, and another one. So all of these do have potential, and they're moving into the Columbus area as we record this video. And in southwestern Ohio, we've got a couple of other new cells. They're still a little bit elevated. Don't see much organization just yet. But of course, those will have to be watched as they move into the Columbus area. If we take a quick look at the upper level flow, the jet stream winds show the polar front jet from Oregon into Wyoming and the Dakotas. Another branch down to the south from Texas, Fort Worth, to around Memphis and the Carolinas. Ohio, in between, only about 30 to 40 knots there at 300 millibars. In Kansas, only about 50 knots. However, at 700 millibars, the flow is a little bit stronger, about 45 to 50 knots across the Midwest. And southwesterly flow in Kansas, about 35 knots, allowing a little bit of elongation of that hodograph. Not seeing any imminent development there in Kansas, rather dry looking, but a few specks of elevated cumulus around Medicine Lodge, out towards uh, around Alva, somewhere in that area. A few more specks of cumulus in central Oklahoma. So let's take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh. However, some important details showing up at 850 millibars. This is about 5,000 feet starting out this evening. Low pressure area in southwestern Nebraska, the warm front we talked about right in here. Now take a look at the winds. Out of the south, about 30 knots at, uh, it's going to be about Ponca City. Out of the south, about 10 knots around uh, Marysville, maybe somewhere in that area. But as you can see, we get up to one in the morning. There's an acceleration of the wind field up to about 35 to maybe 40 knots. 
cyclogenesis in southwestern Nebraska. The warm front gets established right in here, cold front on the other side. So this is going to be a low-level jet feeding up the I-35 corridor. By tomorrow morning, low pressure area emerging into eastern Kansas. There's the cold front, there's the warm front, and the low-level jet shifts towards western Missouri. If we take a look at the high-resolution rapid refresh, this shows the theta E field. In other words, where the lifted parcel is furthest over on the right side of the sounding. So that's going to be the moisture axis. This is going to be about midday today. Then as we go into the evening, you can see that moisture axis shifting up into northern Oklahoma and up towards the Wichita area. And that's going to kind of carry the front with it at the surface there. But later this evening, towards maybe 11 or maybe 9 or 10, somewhere in there, some elevated convection. The model has it breaking out around Emporia, maybe Topeka, somewhere in that area. It is pretty well detached from the moisture axis, but some of those could be severe later on. Moving into the Kansas City area, maybe western Missouri, again detached from the better moisture, although this is a surface chart. So aloft, yeah, there probably is some elevated moisture in this region here, some higher theta E's reaching up and over that frontal boundary. And this is kind of interesting. You can see the cold front right there sneaking down the west side of the surface low, which is located right there. See that very faint change in the theta e a little bit more moist north of the boundary it's kind of cool seeing details like that on the mesoscale model runs so that's going to be the frontal boundary the old dry line right in here and these storms right here on the nose of that low level jet Anyway, i got to get this closed up and take one more look at Ohio. But before we do that, let's go into tonight's chart. You can see that cold air coming down from the northern plains, feeding that baroclinic weather system in Kansas. It's going to be a very dynamic weather process going through there this evening. Support for those storms around the Kansas City area and strong cold advection working down the high plains. Looks like none of that is frozen precip. Rain all the way up to Minneapolis, all the way up to Sioux City. But the 540 line, pretty close at hand, right there. 540 is where that precip tends to change over to snow. Of course, that varies by season and area of the country, but that's a general guideline. Anyway, that surface system will be moving into the Midwest, the triple point, tomorrow evening in Illinois. So maybe a Reoccurrence of severe weather in the Midwest once again, starting over with the western Midwest region and maybe shifting eastward overnight into Friday. So there's one in the morning. There's 7 a.m. So, yeah, this thing is moving along pretty well. Triple point should be well to the east by afternoon on Friday. Lots of cold air spilling into the Midwest, the Corn Belt, the Central Plains, and even down to Texas. Late season cold air outbreak, some of it reaching into the Continental Divide and the Great Basin region. Not really so much into the Four Corners and Southwest. Going into later on Friday and into the weekend, Big old chunk of cold air across much of the eastern and central part of the country that will set the stage for overrunning isentropic lift as we get that cyclogenesis out there in the Rockies, bringing Gulf moisture up and over the front. So a little bit of overrunning, elevated precip, and even some snow there in Colorado over the weekend. Rain breaking out in Texas. Some embedded thunderstorms possible on Saturday and into early Sunday, and then that moves eastward with the upper-level disturbance and into the southeastern U.S. on Sunday. Cold air remains in place across the eastern and central U.S., another outbreak of cold air into the northwestern U.S. That'll mostly affect the northern half of the Great Plains, 
but some effects all the way down into Kansas and Oklahoma, although it will be kind of a dry front with cold advection all the way down towards Dodge City, Perryton, and Springfield. Things, uh, I haven't quite resolved this. Things are a little bit active there in this California region. Some sort of Pacific weather system going through there. I've had this front hopscotching into the Gulf of California and then redeveloping out to the west. It was kind of hard to pick that out. To me, that's a sign that the models aren't really picking up on the details very well. But it does look like something coming together maybe later next week in the western U.S. and slowly working eastward during the week into the high plains. Okay, so that's the last frame I have. Yeah, you can check out the European chart real quick. Ridging across the Atlantic with a subtropical low down there near the Azores. Europe cooling off with a good push of cold air right there, 525 decameter cold pool over the Netherlands. And we haven't had a chance to check out Canada, but they are under ridging. This is a big ridge up and down the Rockies, cold air funneling down on the east side of that ridge and a couple of occlusions in Manitoba and Ontario. And the Pacific looking like this deep wound up system there that's going to gradually make its way to the west coast and a pretty good plunge of cold air from the Aleutians into the North Pacific region. And then checking on our situation there in Ohio, we did have those tornado warnings out earlier. Complex still continues to move to the east, but at this time, we're just looking at severe thunderstorm warnings. A couple of strong cells there on the tail end. And if we zoom way in, looks like some areas probably getting some hail on the north and northeast side of Columbus. But the velocity signature is really not all that impressive. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll be back on Friday for another edition. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.